Well, welcome to this week's Weather Impact. I'm meteorologist Matt Willoughby. Have you ever wondered on a warm spring day, on a hot summer day, you just wanted to hop into the pool? But as soon as you do that, it is significantly colder than the air temperature. Well, there is a reason for that. We're going to break that down as we go throughout the next few minutes. So what this means is water has a higher heat capacity, so that means it takes much longer to heat and cool. But for example, air, we see those multiple days where we go from 70 degrees to 60 degrees back to 90 degrees, but that's due to that air temperature having a much lower air capacity and heat capacity, which actually it means it can quickly heat and cool faster as we go throughout each and every day. So example to show you for it, heat capacity, pretty much the amount of heat required to raise that temperature of substance by one degree. That's basically what the definition of heat capacity is. But to give you an example, say for example, that water temperature and air temperature started at the same thing as 60 degrees. Well, due to that low heat capacity of air, You'll see that temperature a much uh, warm, much faster than the water temperature where it only rises a few degrees to 64 degrees. So that's about a four degree difference. But with air temperature, almost a 15 degree difference. As you go throughout the overnight hours, you'll slowly see that temperature drop quickly. But that water temperature pretty much staying the same. You go into the early night hours and even the morning hours, you can see the temperature is mid 40s. But that water temperature only dropping a few degrees. That's of course due to that high water capacity, that heat capacity that water does in fact have. A good example of this is we typically see in Toledo that warmest average temperature right around 87 degrees. And that's typically what happens in July. But that warmest water average high temperature, mid 70s, and that actually doesn't happen until August. So like I said, it takes much, much longer for water to heat and cool. That's why we typically see the highest average high of water in the month of August. A good example of this is we saw a few 60, 70, and even 80 degree days before June uh, 13th where temperatures were at 93 degrees, but that water temperature almost 30 degrees colder at 68 degrees. So that's almost a 30 degree difference. Another example, on June 17th, we saw that low temperature of 69 degrees, high temperature of water uh, 73 degrees with the average right on 71 degrees. But as we look at air, that low of 70 degrees, well, we saw a high of 99 degrees. And we could break this down month by month as well. January 1st, typically one of the colder months, we saw the air temperature 37 degrees, water temperature 37 degrees, but you change it up a little bit. February 1st, 57 degrees, has saw a cooler water temperature, but not much different between 37 and 34 degrees. 38 degrees in March, 49 degrees. So we did see some changing, and you can see rapid changes. 37, 53 to 49, 48 to 83 degrees by May 1st. But you can see a constant change of temperatures where you go from 38, 40, and back to 56 degrees on May 1st. Now, as we go throughout each year, this can really start to impact that water temperature in our area. So we, with due to high temperatures and warming temperatures, that shrinking range in water temperature could change and there could be some impacts to that, which means higher air temperatures means increased precipitation, which is not necessarily a good thing for that lake as well. That brings more algal blooms to our area, and that typically changes the ecosystem on that Lake Erie. Now, that also can affect water quality, habitats, and less oxygen, which would be a really bad thing for mayflies, of course, that feed on those fish as you go throughout those summer months. And this could be one of the higher impacts we see. So that's why as we go throughout many years, we start to see that average high temperature raise and of that, that water temperature slow down. And that is exactly an example of why air has a low heat capacity than water does, which has a high heat capacity. I'm meteorologist Matt Willoughby. Thanks for watching this weather impact.